the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. <clears throat> on Amen. my heart and bring your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, Peace be within you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. Today is like Terre Sunday, or Rejoice Sunday, as it gets its name from the introit which I just read. Some would even call it Ric Flair Sunday, as they say their woos and enjoy this day as a respite from the penitential season of Lent. For today we put away the deep purple and enjoy the lighter pink pyramids, or rose, as we look forward to the coming celebration of Easter that is nearly here. Yet today, it seems as if rejoicing is the last thing on our minds. Today is the first Sunday that we have not had a regular service here at Zion since I've been a pastor, and probably since you've been a pastor at right, Pastor Hall. Today feels like rejoicing is the last thing we want to do. The whole world seems to be in a panic. The shelves in the grocery stores are bare. We are supposed to stay isolated at home. The stock market is at an all-time low. Businesses and even churches are closed. People are losing their jobs. And everyone is paranoid. Rejoicing seems like the last thing to do at a time like this. The children of Israel, in our Old Testament lesson, didn't feel much like rejoicing either. They'd been led out of Egypt and into the wilderness, and they missed the meat pots and the bread that they'd enjoyed while enslaved in Egypt. Rather than rejoicing that they were free, they grumbled against Moses and Aaron and ultimately the Lord. Just when they thought they were going to starve to death, the Lord spoke to Moses and I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. When they thought they were going to starve to death, the Lord gave them the assurance that He would continue to provide for them each and every day. The disciples also found themselves in the wilderness with no food. In our Gospel lesson, we hear how Jesus was teaching the disciples along with the great crowd of more than 5,000 by the Sea of Galilee. When asked where they would buy bread, Philip declared 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get just a little. Finally, a boy offered up his lunch of five barley loaves and two fish. The disciples still weren't ready to rejoice because they said, what are they for so many? Yet Christ had a plan and told them all to sit down. They distributed the bread and the fish and everyone ate till they were full and there were still twelve baskets full left over of fragments. We can certainly relate to the Israelites and the disciples. We go to the grocery store and we see the empty shelves. We look at our bank account and it seems empty. I look out at this sanctuary right now and it seems empty. As we endure this pandemic, it is easy for us to grumble like the Israelites and be critical. It's easy for us to be skeptical like the disciples. 
It's an easy time for doubt and despair and loneliness to creep in as we endure the wilderness of this life. Yet in the midst of this despair, in the midst of this isolation, in the midst of this wilderness, we are not alone. Christ is with us as he has promised he will never leave nor forsake us. He continues to provide for his children just as he provided for Israel and just as he provided for the 5,000. He will continue to love and care for us no matter what calamity we face. He will continue to provide our daily bread just as he always has. As the small catechism says, daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, household, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. Though he may not give us the miracle of manna or the feeding of the 5,000, he continues to provide for us in his own way through good government, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. If anyone has any need, the saints of Zion are here to help and provide for you in any way. God provides for us through one another, and for that we rejoice. God provides for his children both physically and spiritually. He provides daily bread to feed our bodies, and He also provides us with the heavenly bread that feeds and nourishes our souls. Though we may not be able to meet physically as we usually do, God continues to provide His Word for us each and every day. Just as He provided Moses and Aaron to Israel, He has provided Zion with faithful pastors like Pastor Paul and myself. Though we aren't able to meet corporately, we are able to visit one another to declare the forgiveness of sins and distribute the Lord's Supper. Though the church isn't able to meet as usual, we are still the church as we gather around the Word and Sacrament that transcends all time and space to unite the whole heavenly host of all believers. Though we may be practicing social distancing physically, we are still able to call, message, and email one another as we continue to enjoy the mutual comfort and consolation of the brethren. No matter how alone you feel during this time, know that you are loved and cared for as a brother or sister in Christ. And as a baptized child of God, Christ is always with you no matter what is happening in the world. Take comfort that you are not watching or reading this sermon alone. You are joined with the entire congregation of all believers. Take comfort that when you read the devotions, you are reading them with the rest of the congregation, and we are all in this together. Though it may not seem like a time to rejoice with all of this doom and gloom, we rejoice today that we know Christ is victorious. We rejoice knowing that Christ has overcome all our sin, shame, doubt, and despair. We rejoice that no matter what Easter looks like this year, it doesn't change the fact that Christ died on the cross for all of our sins, and on Easter Sunday was raised triumphant over sin, death, and the devil for you. This Vitarious Sunday, we rejoice that Christ continues to provide for his people in both body and soul. We rejoice that we are able to take comfort in a faithful God that is always present and victorious. We rejoice that we are comforted with hymnody that declares, In God, my faithful God, I trust when dark my road. Great woes may overtake me, yet he will not forsake me. My troubles he can alter in his hand, let nothing falter. Though we may not feel like it, this is still a great time to rejoice. No matter what else is going on, we always have the comfort that on account of Christ our sins are forgiven, and heaven is ours. And for that we rejoice forever. In the name of Jesus, Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, God, and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.